Well, it's a true privilege to have independent photojournalist Julian Lachey join me today. Julian, thanks for taking time. Hey, thank you, Brian. Thanks for having me. We're speaking today a couple days after the Capitol riot that the mob stormed Congress. And uh, you were there and I wanted to hear what it was like in your own words. Could you tell me about your time in D.C. and, and walk me through what you experienced? I arrived in D.C. the day before on January 5th, and I, you know, wanted to get there early to, yeah, to get the environment to, to see what was happening. I knew that January 6th was the big protest day. I was unsure what, what was going to happen, but yeah. it was the big protest day. There was a few protests going on that night, so the tension was kind of rising, you know. The energy was there. So the next morning, I went to the Trump rally, the big speech. I was there for a few hours. Tell me a little bit, you know, how many people were there? What was the mood at that rally? How close were you to the staging? Tell me about that. Um, it was it was mobbed. People were getting there, you know, very early. It was very packed. There was very few masks um, being worn, which was a worry, of course, being in a packed crowd. So I stayed pretty far away. I was kind of on the outskirts for that initial rally. When Trump was speaking, at one point, he said to walk over to the Capitol. And at the time that he gave that, I was already on my way towards the Capitol. And there was already a rush of people at the Capitol gates. So I arrived a little late to the scene in terms of the initial action at the Capitol. That's interesting. Let me unpack that for a second. So what you're describing is the, 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 the speech or the rally where President Trump is, he's saying, well, let's march to the Capitol. I think his words were, I'm going to march with you, but I don't think he did. Um, yep. So, you know, let's march to, to the Capitol. So you make your way down to Congress, down to Capitol Hill. Walk me towards that moment. Tell me what that looked like. There was already a decent crowd already at the Capitol. So I was walking with ahead of most of them, but still in the pack of, um, of supporters. There is already more kind of gates than there normally would because they had a lot of barricades for inauguration coming up. Initially, the protesters are already kind of at the front steps of the Capitol, having a little bit of a police um, and protester standoff. Did you have any interaction with supporters, with, with Trump supporters? Were they uh, communicating with you or did you communicate with them, you know, as you were approaching Congress? Yeah, personally, I had I did have interactions, but they were all fairly peaceful. I was wearing my press pass and, you know, had my cameras. So I looked like press. Right. So they would come up to me, you know, hey, who do you shoot for? You know, do you shoot for a right leaning, a left leaning? You know, so they would ask me those kind of questions and mm. I would just you know, give them my answer. Independent journalist. I'm here to cover what's happening. This is a historic event. And from those interaction, I had pretty peaceful experiences. But with my fellow journalists there, um, some of them were heavily harassed. So let's recap a little bit. You get to Congress and tell me a little bit of your experience there at Capitol Hill. And you're really capturing the moment. So walk me now through what you experienced with your lens. Tell me. As soon as I got there, as soon as I reached the Capitol, um, like I said, there was already a protester police, you know, kind of barricade front line. So I walked, you know, right up to that. Where I was, I was to the right, where it was a slightly bit more peaceful to the left, kind of, of the Capitol where I was standing. There was already flashbangs and mace being, being sprayed. So I walked up and tried to get, you know, the best vantage point I could to get, you know, to get a better angle of what was happening behind that line. And a few of my pictures of the officers, you know, being tear gassed and being sprayed came from that. I think first and foremost, you have a photo of a policeman clearly a policeman with uh, his uniform and, and safety vest on, on the ground, on his back, prone with a, a rioter on top of him. Can you tell me about that moment? Because you were clearly right in it. Tell me what happened. At that moment, we can probably call them, you know, domestic terrorists at this point. They made their main push and like kind of broke through the police to kind of take over the full steps and the front plaza of the Capitol. What I witnessed was... Um, this man grabbed a police officer, you know, wrestled with him, struggled with him, went directly for his um, face mask and respirator. Now, you know, speaking of equipment, it, there, you have another photo where there's a wheeled Trump sign that's 
up on it's it's sort of horizontal and they're using it against the police what was mm-hmm. happening there there was this massive it was huge i think it was like a 12 foot by like 12 foot steel structure that had a a massive trump 2020 banner you know in the middle of it and that banner was actually i don't know where it came from but i saw it probably 100 feet 200 feet off in the crowd being crowd surfed um all the way to the front of the barricade it it's just it's just amazing this sign is lifted up and crowd surfed from the back of the crowd and then lands up on police yeah, absolutely. So on my Instagram, there's a little there's a little gallery of about eight to ten photos where you could see this massive sign be crowd surfed, come up to the police barrier and then be thrown over. And it just kept moving, kept moving, you know, towards the Capitol. And then once it was there, it was like thrown over and then eventually pushed over the barricade into the back of the police line. You know, in, in the group of photos that you've shared with me and I've taken a look at, there's one that really stood out, a gentleman holding an axe handle. As a photojournalist, you know, tell me about capturing that moment because it's clearly a moment. It really tells a story in that instant. Tell me what that means to you. Capturing those kind of raw emotion, you know, split second moments is the reason why I do love, you know, you know, documenting and being a photojournalist is you do capture those moments and those moments you know, can tell, even though it's a split second of the story, it can really almost tell the full story sometimes. The camera also helps because that is a very stressful, intense, you know, dangerous situation. Julian, thanks for talking to me today. Uh, You know, you'll be covering other events in the future and uh, it's important, please, that you stay safe. Julian Lachey, independent photojournalist, thank you for talking to me. Thank you, Brian. Thanks for having me on.